Hey everyone, welcome to a new video on my channel, this time about progressive delivery with Flagger and um, Linkerd as well. Uh, I did some videos earlier about uh, Canary and Blue Green releases uh, with a tool called Argo Rollouts. And I thought I uh, yeah, mix it up a little bit by also discussing some of the other tools in, in the market. Uh, to be honest, there are also some reasons why I switched. Uh, I have some details about that in a blog post on my blog if you are uh, interested. So uh, I'm going to just show how this works in a, let's say, optimal uh, scenario. So you understand, hopefully, uh, what it's all about. Um, and maybe in later videos, uh, take a little bit of a look at, let's say, error scenarios or some other issues you might uh, come, uh, come across. Um, I'm using an application just like before, which is uh, in other videos on my channel, I mean, uh, which is this one. Um, so it's a, it's a soccer.io app. There are no messages being sent right now. So in fact, we're just uh, trying this out or we are testing this with a, with a web application that is giving us this, uh, this front end here. Pretty simple, pretty basic. There is also a Redis app in the background and so on, but that's not something that's important for this, uh, for this discussion. And when you look at the, the, the YAML here, the YAML is pretty, pretty basic. So the YAML I can show you here, it will be also available on the demo clue flux repository on, uh, on GitHub. And what you'll see here is again, a deployment of Redis. So uh, nothing uh, special there. A service for Redis uh, to reach the Redis, uh, Redis database. And then we have our deployment um, of our real time application. That's that. Uh, web interface you saw a moment ago. So this deployment is called real-time app, labeling it also real-time app. And the spec of the deployment, um, we deploy a container, which we also call real-time uh, app. We give it a label as well, app. I'm app, yes, again. And of course, our deployment matches uh, that, uh, that label there. So pretty simple deployment using the image flux app 1.000, which again gives you this interface uh, here. Now, there is some uh, extra stuff going on. For example, we have an ingress as well, uh, and that ingress is, um, is uh, going to the application. Now, if you look very closely, if you're paying attention here, uh, you'll probably see that I don't have a service for this deployment. Don't have one. It's not defined in this YAML file or anywhere else. I didn't do so. Um, I do, uh, however, refer to the real-time app primary service in my ingress, although I didn't define it. And when we deploy this, uh, this uh, deployment here, together with this canary YAML, which I'll discuss in a moment, we do get the following. So we, uh, we get our real-time app deployment, which was defined in my deployment spec. But somehow, through the Canary definition by Flagger, the software I'm using here, it transforms, so to speak, or it creates a deployment called real-time app, in this case, dash primary, with, of course, a replica set. And then the pods that use version 1.0.0 that give me that light blue background there. Yeah. As you can see, some services uh, are in front of it as well. So I have a real time app service, although I didn't define that service. Um, and there's a, a real time app uh, primary uh, service as well. That's why, because I know that what's the name going to be. Uh, there's a let's say, deterministic naming convention here going on, I can refer my ingress to the, let's say, always a primary version of our, uh, of our application. And that's just, uh, yeah, just, just an example that I'm, that I'm doing here. I could, could have done this differently as well. But just to show you, okay, that's what I'm doing here, in fact. Right? Okay. So what we want to do in this case, we want to create a spec, a canary spec with Flagger that does all this work for us. So let's go back to our Visual Studio code and look at the canary YAML here. So canary YAML 
um, or the, the YAML file we create here creates uh, an object of uh, uh, or a manifest of kind canary. And that's of course the result of the, the Flagger installation I did. So Flagger installed on your cluster is able uh, to work with these types of custom resources. So I call the canary uh, real time. And then, and that's that's maybe different if you've, se if you've seen the, the movies about or the, the YouTube videos about the other application, Argo rollouts, there you have a rollout spec and the rollout spec is replacing the deployment. That's not something that Flagger is doing. What you see here is that it's Flagger actually works with a normal deployment and you refer to the deployment you should use uh, within the, the canary specification you see here. So in this case, that's just a reference to the deployment that I created earlier, that I showed you earlier, which is defined within this real-time YAML file. As I said, I'm not defining services in my real-time YAML file. I do define the service here. So I specify the port that the service should use, and I specify the target port on the containers that run my application, which is 8080 in my case. Great. Of course, when we are going to do updates to our application, we tell him to do a canary release. So we want to actually progress slowly to a new version of the application. And we're gonna test in the meantime, using a metric analysis, we're going to test and see if that new version is performing correctly. So that's defined here. So we're saying the analysis interval should be uh, one minute. Uh, yes, when there are five failures, when I fail to capture uh, the metrics, we're gonna stop you know, and abort the, the rollout. And I'm saying here, let's go progress to the maximum weight of 100%, just an example. So that means we will shift traffic up to 100% to the canary. Um, and we do that in steps of 20% uh, each time. So we'll, we have five steps to reach that, uh, that maximum weight there. But of course, the question is, how are we going to do uh, the metric analysis? And what metric are we going to use? Well, because I'm using the, the Linkerd um, service mesh here, and Flagger supports Linkerd built-in um, built-in metrics like request success rate. There is another one as well that's supported. I can just refer to that metric, so I don't have to have like let's say Prometheus installed or depend on some other external system uh, to get the metric uh, for me. This is a Linkerd metric. Yeah, so Linkerd was installed. You can see it here. Linkerd has a dashboard as well, a UI. But what I did in, uh, if you look at the namespaces, uh, the default namespace was meshed. Yeah, okay, it's fine. And um, when I'm looking at that uh, default namespace, I'm seeing right now that there's some traffic going on from a pod called Flagger Load Tester to Real-Time App Primary. Okay, we'll see why that is. So if we go to Real-Time App Primary, we see, yes, indeed, we have some metrics here. And one of the metrics of an application is the uh, success rate. So success rate here, yeah, 100%, that's a good one. <laughs> Always like 100%. Uh, that one is being, being tracked here, right? So Flagger is running. I made sure that, uh, sorry, Linkerd is running. I made sure that, that Linkerd, Linkerd uh, sidecar container is injected into the application that I'm actually uh, using uh, Flagger with. And you can see that quite clearly in, in, this, in this UI. You can really see that it's working because here on the real-time app primary, which is, again, let me remind you, uh, this thing here, which is now running with version 1.0.0, it's, uh, it's, it's capturing metrics. Now, where are the metrics coming from? Of course, this is a fake application, a test application. So the metrics are coming, of course, from a load tester. The load tester was deployed with this load deployment here, which is just copied from the, the Flagger website. Flagger, uh, the guys from Flagger, they uh, provide you with this uh, load tester here, load tester and the load service. And I just, um, I just um, terminaled into this, yeah, I terminaled into this uh, pod, in that load tester pod. What I'm doing there is continuously using uh, hey, which is uh, sending some data, doing some requests to real-time app.default. So it, it goes to the, 
to the, not to the real-time app primary, but to the real-time app service, uh, which in this case, because all traffic is going 100% to the real-time app primary, of course, only the real-time app primary uh, is, receiving, is receiving that traffic. So in the background here, continuously, you have this, let's say, yeah, traffic being generated. And that's also why you see here on the Linkerd level, you see here that traffic is being generated all the time while uh, we are looking at, at the specs. And you can see this here, live traffic will appear in a moment, the live calls, we're in the live calls here, and the live traffic will appear here, and you see uh, the calls uh, coming in. That's from Hay, from the Hay load generator is actually doing this, and it's the load tester, uh, which is sending the requests um, via Hey to our uh, real-time app primary. So that's great. That is working. Yeah? So Linkerd is running, and we have Flagger uh, running as uh, as well. Now, um, an important thing maybe to note is that instead of having some kind of load tester running all the time in the background, which is in this case, of course, a bad thing to do, uh, there's also a way to enable this using a webhook. I, I didn't actually choose to do it here, but indeed this this load tester application which we are deploying here, uh, you can send a webhook to it. So in this case, here's the URL that you then would go to, and with the metadata that you provide via via this here, you can tell the load tester, "Hey, run this command for me." So that's also possible, um, and you don't need to run this load tester all the time uh, on your system. But here, for demo purposes, this is great that we have uh, that we have this running in the in the background. So of course, the thing that you want to see is uh, what happens when we uh, upgrade our application. So in this case, I'm saying I'd like to go to version 1.0.2. We save it. Um, and uh, we are applying this, in this case, using Quebec to apply, we are applying this to our, uh, to our Kubernetes cluster. Well, in KubeView, all kinds of things will start to happen. Uh, now, of course, Flagger is detecting that you're doing a new release. The primary stays up and running, and the primary still serves 1.0.0 via this ingress here. So this stays the same. Yeah? There's there's no no uh, no difference uh, no difference there. And he's bringing up uh, this new release, just called it doesn't it's not called Canary or something, but that's actually our Canary. Why? Because the Automatically, the real-time app canary service is actually connected to these pods, which is 1.0.2. This also means that yeah, the analysis, the canary analysis, should start on these pods via this service or whatever, whatever uh, you want to do. So let's check out um, how we can follow this. For example, we can describe the canary, which is called uh, our, our canary is called real time, and this one is actually saying. Well, I'm seeing, because I had already done this a few times before, I'm seeing here there's a new revision detected. We're scaling up real-time default. So he sees something uh, something happened here. We're scaling it up. And then after a while, our analysis will uh, start. What you will also see here is our uh, traffic split. Yeah? So Linkerd has the ability uh, to do traffic splitting. And Flagger is actually using that feature for its canary analysis. So in this case, we have the real-time app service, so to speak, and there is a canary and there's a primary. And via the traffic split capabilities within Linkerd, you can specify the percentage of traffic that has to go to the canary and to the primary one. And here you see that analysis already started and the weight was already shifted 20% to the canary and of course 80% to the primary. I can see this here as well when I'm describing my canary. There he said, yes, we advanced real-time default canary, the weight to 20%. And because my load generator is going to the full service, including the primary one, 20% of traffic from the load generator uh, is actually going to uh, the canary release. And because the traffic is successful, the success rate stays uh, at, uh, in this case, at 100%, uh, means that it's actually successful our canary analysis and we can progress to 40% weight. Yeah, where did I specify uh, what my success factor should be? Well, that's not too difficult. If you go to the canary resource, you see here that we say, well, the metric is the request success rate, right? The threshold range minimum 99% over a minute. 
So that's this one here, yes, it's 100%, which is over 99%. So that's great. That means the canary uh, analysis is working properly, right? We can check it here again. There you see, uh, after a moment, yeah, not really there yet. Uh, it will come and it will actually say we went to we went to 40 as well. So we can just leave this be, uh, no fail checks. We are progressing through the canary analysis. And we just uh, can follow it along nicely here. Uh, we're going to 60% uh, of the weight, so 60-40. And you can imagine that when uh, the weight of the canary is 100%, uh, and they all succeeded, and we progressed nicely, that, um, of course, we will need to switch this uh, canary. So the canary should become the primary, and then we scale down the, the old the old release ready for a new iteration so to speak so we give this uh, some time in the meantime uh, you can also see that that this here of course yeah just stays the same eh? there's nothing specific going on here uh, it stays the same but it's of course that the traffic split functionality from linkerd is doing its work and by the way i can show you also where you see the traffic split in the user interface if i go to my namespace and i go to the default namespace uh, you can see, and by the way, you can see now, eh, the load tester is going both to the primary and to the canary. This is the canary, so that's nicely visualized in uh, in Linkerd. And when you go to the traffic split, you can also see it here. That's the same as in the in the console interface. You can see here indeed we have eighty percent now to the canary, and twenty percent is going to our primary, right? And still, luckily on the canary level, hundred percent uh, success here. Uh, which is, uh, of course, what we, what we need. Yeah, so you can fully see it in the UI, or you use the the Linkerd uh, command line, and you can see that here, the Linkerd command line. But we put the uh, watch in front of it, uh, so watch dash n one to uh, get an update every one second from this Linkerd stat command. Um, maybe just check if we see something more here on this side. Yeah, there you see it. So some things were uh, were um, let's say combined. So he says yes. Now we are at hundred percent. We advanced to real time default. That's the canary. We advanced this to hundred percent, and uh, there we go. Hundred percent is going to the canary. Uh, Zero percent is going to the primary. That means that uh, yeah. In this case, oh, that's not the one I need. In this case, the application. Yeah, if I refresh uh, refresh this, it's still this uh, background here. That's normally because that one is actually is actually still active because that's going directly to the the primary and the primary is still linked to that uh, old primary. Um, and you see it here, eh? one dot zero dot zero. So after a moment, uh, flagger has to decide. Okay. This is now at 100%, it's successful. It should then tell you, now I'm going to really switch the canary and the canary will become the primary. That's not uh, what happened yet. We can maybe see if he's starting to do it and it will show up later. He, he will start with that after a while, depending a bit on the timing. And then of course we should see after a moment, yeah, he's busy now actually. Um, he's he's going to do this 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 stuff for you so normally the real-time app primary will go to uh, the new pot which is 1.0.2 here you see it that also means that my ingress is going to 1.0.2 and that one is using an ugly uh, purple background normally that's the one so we clearly can see uh, that's the difference between the two versions 1.0.2 has this ugly ugly uh, color here um, and we see now what happened. We see that the primary has now been switched to uh, 1.0.2. This is the old one. The old one is one. Sorry, no, that's that's yeah, no, that's that's also 1.0.2. Uh, but that will be uh, shut down in uh, in a moment. That will actually uh, go back to uh, go back to uh, go back to zero. But that that will take a moment. Now I'm going to look at the description. Of the canary as well still there that's okay that's not a problem and here we have the canary at uh, at zero yes and primary is now at 100% that's the switch 
that uh, actually happened and now the hey a load tester is also working against uh, that one you can clearly see uh, something is changing there nothing is changing at the at the canary level that's now going going down there are no counters now at this moment because nothing is ending up at the, the canary it's zero percent in this case so the primary is now uh, active yeah okay. still now going into that mode where he scales down the uh, the old one i'm just giving it some time um, and then you normally are just left with your new primary which in our case is 1.0.2 and um, the other one will just sit there waiting for a new deployment to happen and to go to a new version so that's in let's say in short or in demo style how this uh, canary uh, deployment or progressive delivery via canary uh, can work if you combine flagger and uh, linkerd i'll also have some additional descriptions on my blog uh, about this this should give you a, a feeling on on how uh, on how to do that so if you want to do it yourself check my github check my blog check the video and you can try this out yourself with your uh, own uh, own application that's it. Thanks for watching. Till next time.